please join me with a thunderous applause and welcome to Ryan Craft, Director of Engineering, Arivo, the arrival company. Ryan, join the Sultan State. And watch your step. Join us, please. So, Ryan, what is Arivo and why? Well, I think everyone here being in Los Angeles can agree that traffic is a problem. I saw some news come out this week that says people in LA spend more than 100 hours a year in traffic. And nationally, we've lost more than $300 billion in 2017 to traffic. So you know, when we look at roads and railways, those are very effective technologies, and they're the backbone of mobility today. We're looking at the future, where more people are living in cities, and roads and railways will continue to struggle. So what we've got here is an idea to have a dedicated infrastructure with actively controlled vehicles that can have very, very high throughput and get people to go where they want in a very, very short period of time. So trust me, it's no different in Boston. <laughs> we sit in traffic a lot. And uh, by the way, you, you have a storied engineering career. Share with this team what you have done. So I've been very fortunate to work with some very talented people on hard problems before, uh, things like the world's first mass production electric car, uh, the world's first reusable rocket, and a little bit of work also on the replacement for the space shuttle that'll take Americans back to space on American spacecraft. Those are really cool projects, and I'm very happy to have been a part of them. But they don't help a lot of people um, beyond inspiration, right? So when we looked at what to do next, me and some of the co-founders of Arivo, we wanted to work on a problem that was really hard, where engineering could make a big difference, but that could affect almost everyone, and that's where Revo came from. I agree, we engineers make a big difference, right? So, two questions. Your employee number what at Arivo? I was number one, first in the door. First, and your engineering number what at Arivo? Uh, number one also, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, how does Arivo uh, intend to achieve its vision? So as you can see with the little simulation that we've got playing, the idea that we have here, uh, this is one of our early products, uh, would be to carry people's existing vehicles in a dedicated infrastructure that's extremely reliable, and we can go a lot faster than people could go, and also a key thing about our technology is very short headways or gaps between vehicles. That allows us to move people in the tens of thousands per hour in a single lane compared to conventional highways, which can only do between two and three. So that's where we'd like to start, but ultimately, as you saw in the first video, the long-term vision for us is not to just move people quickly through our infrastructure, whether it be in their car or in a pod that we build, but also to depart the infrastructure and deliver you the last mile to your final destination. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but we're starting with this product here that you see, which we call the City Zipper. Awesome, and if you achieve this goal, what does it mean to the world? I think it means that we can give people a lot of time back in their lives. Uh, and the more important thing as an engineer who's been responsible for safety systems in the past is that we can eliminate the loss of life in industries that come from a lot of transit systems today. That's awesome. I, I read an article that said by 2050, apparently 75% of the world will live in urban areas, and we definitely need this, right? So, you know, you, all of you heard a lot about the 3D Experience platform, and you actually started with the 3D Experience platform on the cloud. What was it like to get started on the 3D Experience platform? Please share this with this amazing group of engineers. Sure, so we were very fortunate as a startup that we could start without any legacy. And when we looked into the market for what would be the right thing to grow a company of largely mechanical engineers, but also electrical uh, and some analysts into uh, you know, a group of five guys in an Airbnb that should really be um, a fire hazard into a full company of a couple hundred engineers in the future, we were looking at a few main criteria. Uh, number one was startup speed and just being able to get going. Number two was medium term scalability, meaning what features could we add and how much would it cost in the next one to two years. And then three, uh, what could the platform do? Did it have all the power that we needed to do hardcore analysis of complicated systems like this? And so with those criteria, 3DX on the cloud with Katia was a, a clear winner. Uh, so we started up in like literally 48 hours and now we're up to 18 users, and hopefully we'll get to uh, another 20 or 30 or so in 2018, but it's been very painless. The amount of involvement that a customer needs when setting up this system is as simple as logging in, downloading four gigs of software, starting it up, and you're in. 
and onboarding new people has been really, really smooth for us. And by the way, the 3D experience platform that powers Katia is the exact same platform that powers X-Design, product designer, all the things that John Paulo talked about on, days, on main stage, as well as it connects to the SolidWorks desktop as well. So my next question to you is, you know, how do you use computer-aided design in your, in your engineering ecosystem? So as you can see, this, these are some photos of folks that we've got working at the company. We're really focused on building. Most of the people here are engineers, but they still touch the hardware uh, every day. And we've set up our systems for CAD, PLM, CAE accordingly, where we really just want to get things out and built and start learning from real hardware as quickly as possible. So we started very light, and that's something that the cloud really allows us to do. Um, what we look forward to in the future is adding in real hardcore PLM, getting into configuration management, and moving into a production mindset as a company. And we're really excited to be able to make that jump really by clicking a few buttons, and not making a big IT investment or bringing in an administrator or anything like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So my next question is, how would you evaluate, you know, you implemented 3D experience on the cloud very early on. How do you rate it now, now that after eight, nine, 10 months of use? Well, I'd look to the customers within the company to answer that question, which would be the users who are building stuff every single day and are very happy. And uh, more importantly, as a director of engineering, my CFO and the head of IT, who are still in disbelief about how little we've had to invest for the amount that we've gotten back. So I'd say we're immensely satisfied. You know, I have been playing with this a lot, and I can tell you, the depth of the functionality and the breadth of it is quite incredible, what, what the 3D experience on the cloud does for you. So my, and, and I think, where is Arivo headed next? How does it fit into your 3D experience, fit into your entire uh, goals and what you're trying to achieve? Sure, so we're looking really 18 months to two years out, that's, that's our big milestone coming up. And without giving too much away, our focus is on uh, moving forward with our technology, our partners, and our customers. Um, so part of that entails growing the engineering team substantially, probably doubling the, our user size in, in terms of people using uh, 3DX, uh, adding a second test site in Colorado where we're focused on demonstrating full system functionality. As you can see here, uh, we've got some partners getting into a public-private partnership out there, uh, AECOM on the infrastructure side, and then E470 in the Colorado DOT on the transportation side of things. And uh, along with that, we'll be implementing further sophistication in 3D experience. Things like uh, real PLM and, and hopefully by the end of this year, ERP integration as well. Fantastic. So listen, you're not just building vehicles. You're building the entire infrastructure that includes on the cloud data analytics, car distances, speed, throughput, and everything, correct? That's right. Do you have your first customer yet? that you can say? Uh, so we've announced this early feasibility study with Colorado, and, and we're looking for a first route there in Denver. There's been some work that's gone on with that already, and we hope to be able to share more in the future. There are some other customers uh, not in the United States that I can't say much about today, but let's say there's a lot of interest in ending traffic. I'm not surprised. I want to be one of your first customers, or the users, not the customer. So what advice would you give others? I'm sure I'm, I'm hoping we are inspiring uh, some of you to start your own companies. What kind of advice would you give users who are thinking that way? Well, I'd say if you're a young company, I'd flip the question around and say, why ever consider going on premise that early? I mean, with, the, with no legacy and, and nothing to carry over, the cloud just allows you to move so much faster. Um, I, I really couldn't imagine doing it a different way, knowing that this tool exists. Anything else? Uh, I would just say that we're hiring. If, if anyone out there is interested in working on a really hard problem that can help a lot of people, please go to the website or find me afterwards. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thanks very much, Keith. Thank you, please.